Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Takashi Matsuo, developer advocate on App Engine. And I'm Danny Hermes, uh, developer programs engineer on App Engine. Yeah, today we are going to ha have a talk about Oath to the Oath to Decorator. Uh, speaking of Oath two, I have I had an experience <laughs> uh, uh, a year ago. I wrote a sample a sample app, app engine application using Google Plus API with or without um, Oath two flow and. It was not very bad experience. Uh, it was just easy as checking out their Google Plus client library <laughs> and copy it to your project directory and tweak the setting up. But I almost forgot about the details, so I'm not el el eligible to talk about that. So here I go with the details. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead. Uh, so OAuth. In general, uh, OAuth 1 first and now OAuth 2 has caused a lot of people a lot of pain. And people say, you know, the only thing worse than OAuth 2 is OAuth 1. Uh, so we want to make these tools as easy as possible for you guys, our developers, to actually, you know, use it and, you know, think about building features into your applications rather than, ha you know, actually having to figure out how OAuth works every single time. So I'm going to try to go through from beginning to end on how uh, you would develop an application uh, using the OAuth 2 decorator in the Python runtime of App Engine. Okay. okay. So um, the first thing you need to do when you're doing OAuth is tell Google, "Hey, I have an application uh, that's going to be performing OAuth." So uh, I will go to uh, the Google APIs console. Uh, it is it can be found at code.google.com/apis/console. Um, it takes me to a project I've already got going, but we'll create a new one just for this. Uh, so uh, my new one uh, we will call uh, GDL Dummy Project. You guys aren't dummies. The project is a dummy. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and uh, as it loads, as it loads, OK, there we go. So uh, this is uh, a list of services that I will actually be able to call, a list of Google APIs that I'll be able to call with this project. Now, uh, I haven't told you this yet, but I'm going to be calling the Tasks API. The Tasks API is um, a way for you to keep track of things that you're doing or for your application to help users track things that they're doing, uh, when they want to get them done by, when they've completed them, a general you know, task list. So uh, we're going to go down and find the Tasks API. There it is. And click that button. It goes from on to off. Now, had I not done this, actually making requests to the Task API uh, with an application using this API console project would give me 403 forbidden errors. Even if I would have a valid OAuth token, mm -hmm. uh, I would still not have access to the API because I wouldn't have turned the service on. Now, when I was preparing for this, it took me about two minutes to actually realize that mm -hmm. I had forgot to check this box. So it's very important to uh, to opt into all the APIs that you're going to be using that are on this list. Uh, so the next thing uh, is uh, API access. So mm -hmm. right now, we have an API key, but uh, we need a client ID and a client secret. Because this client ID and this client secret is how we actually perform the OAuth dance. And uh, w we need to actually give this to our decorator when we, uh, when we construct it in our code. Um, so we're going to create it before we actually have to have one in our code. OK, um, so uh, our, we're just going to be uh, using localhost. For, so for our home page, HTTP uh, colon slash slash localhost 8080. Uh, this will be uh, local only, mm -hmm. but if you had you know, an App Engine app, your app ID dot app spot dot com would be your home page. Uh, and our product, you know, dummy task app mm -hmm. is what it is. And we don't actually need a logo. So then it's going to ask us if it's a web application, a service account, uh, or an installed application. So this is going to be a web application, obviously, uh, hosted on App Engine. Uh, and uh, the actual uh, site is uh, localhost 8080, as I said before. And what we'll get uh, for a redirect URI, uh, I don't know if people can see it, but it's http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 slash OAuth2 callback. And this is actually the, the default callback used uh, to handle uh, a response from, from Google 
when the OAuth 2 dance is complete. So for those who aren't entirely familiar with OAuth, I'm not going to go too much into detail about it because we're really talking about App Engine with OAuth, not OAuth as a standalone. Uh, but what happens is your application with this client ID and this client secret that we're uh, trying to get will actually uh, send a request to a Google URL uh, that your user can authorize your application or not, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, if the user says allow access, they get redirected to your application to a URI that you specify. So in this case, we specify slash slash OAuth2 callback. Uh, and uh, af at slash OAuth2 callback, we actually have to handle uh, the redirect from the, from the Google OAuth2 part of the handshake and determine you know, whether or not we have a valid user. And that is what uh, the OAuth2 decorator is going to allow us to do. So here I'm going to go create this client ID. OK, cool. So now we have uh, a client ID and a client secret. And we have a few other things, like this redirect URI that we just specified. And if we were going to be using uh, a Google API directly from JavaScript, we also have an origin, which is trusted uh, by Google. Um, so we're just going to leave this like that for now. Uh, and we're going to go hop into our App Engine and actually start building an application. Do you have a question? No. OK. No, I, I thought I heard Takashi making a noise like he wanted to talk. Mm -hmm. But apparently, he didn't have a question. All right, cool. So um, I'm here programming uh, on my Mac. Uh, and I've got a Google App Engine launcher open. Uh, and I, I've already loaded up uh, the project that, I am, uh, that I'm going to be working on, the app. Uh, so just to start us out, uh, we've got a simple application. Uh, it's running Python 2.7. Mm -hmm. People are still on Python 2.5. I strongly encourage going to Python 2.7. Uh, and for all, uh, for all paths, all routes, we're just using main.py uh, via uh, this file. Uh, and all it's doing is saying, hello, GDL. So let's run that. And we're going to take this simple main.py, and we're going to turn it into our application uh, that uses the OAuth2 decorator. Mm. Uh, so let's just go to localhost 8080. There we go. Hello, GDL. OK, great. So mm. now we want to do, uh, we want to add some of the things provided uh, for OAuth 2. So what we actually want to use to interact with Google APIs is a library called the Google API Python client. So uh, the Google API Python client is uh, it's a library used for Python to actually interact with Google APIs, and it actually provides this thing we want. Mm. So in order to use it with App Engine, there's a specific download. Uh, it, it's on the downloads page of the product project, excuse me, uh, and it says. It's called Full Dependencies Build for Google App Engine Projects with version mm -hmm. 1.0 of this library. So uh, I'm going to go grab this. Uh, I'm going to copy the, the address of the download. And I will just wget it mm -hmm. into my directory uh, of the project. And then I'm going to just unzip it. And by doing this, uh, you're, you're actually able to have all the dependencies that you need. So uh, I just did a, a quick ls in the directory. And we have OAuth2 client, URI template, HTTP lib2, mm -hmm. many of the dependencies needed to actually use Google API Python client. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the first step. Uh, now, once we've done that, we can start importing things from it. So uh, uh, to actually, uh, actually build a service object to call Google APIs mm -hmm. uh, from the API client uh, package provided with this library, we're going to import a method called build. OK? okay. Uh, and then uh, from the OAuth2 client uh, package uh, within the App Engine module, we're going to import this OAuth2 decorator. Now, uh, I have some notes where I can check this later. Uh, there may be some typos, or maybe I'm capitalizing something wrong, but we'll see. That's the fun of a live demo, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, using these two, we can accomplish pretty much everything we want to accomplish. So the first thing we'll do, we'll have a decorator, uh, which is an instance of OAuth2 decorator. And here we need to pass in our client ID, our client secret, and then also a scope. And this scope is going to give us uh, access to particular things. So since we're using the tasks API, 
we actually need a tasks scope. I mentioned before that mm -hmm. had we not turned on that tasks service, then we would have got a 403. By the same token, if we if we uh, if we re request an OAuth two token without uh, without the correct scope, and we request uh, we make an API request that that needs that scope, then that will of course be rejected. So we, we we're going to have to uh, specify a specific scope. Uh, okay. So first the client ID. We'll go back to the console. We see here my client ID one zero etc. Uh, and just gonna fill that in as a string. Oh man, it's a long string. I don't like mm. uh, exceeding eighty lines or eighty characters, eighty columns. So mm. we're gonna do that. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a bit uh, uh, how to say. Uh, it's not so big a deal, but I don't like it. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we go get our client secret from the same page: VM J five, FD, etc. Uh, now. When you're developing applications, don't commit these client secrets to open source projects. Don't leave them out in the open. Don't expose them in, in JavaScript or HTML. These are secret, right? Uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'm letting you all see, because this project uh, on the Google APIs console, I'm just going to throw away after this. Uh, but in general, this is a secret. And this is how you're actually keeping the OAuth handshake that you do with Google secure. By loading it into main.py, it's known server side so you can actually perform the authentication server side but you definitely don't want to expose this client side or like I said as part of an open source project uh, and as the as the final keyword argument to uh, to the OAuth 2 decorator uh, constructor we're gonna pass in the scope so the scope we want here uh, is uh, it's the uh, I don't know if exactly if this is what it is but this is approximately what it is. Uh, the, it's the scope for task. HTTPS colon slash slash www.googleapis.com slash auth slash tasks. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that's what it is. Um, but we'll see. If, if, uh, if we get a failure, we get a failure. That's the fun, mm -hmm. right? The fun of yeah. this. Uh, looks, yeah, it looks correct. Yeah. OK, <laughs> looks correct. There we go. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I could I could Google it, but I, I'd rather uh, take my chances just for uh, for your benefit of of seeing how you really debug these things. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Mm. Uh, I'll write it. We'll do it live. Um, uh, if you don't know the reference, you should you should Google that exact phrase. Uh, and then after after building the decorator, mm -hmm. um, we actually need to interact with Google APIs. Actually. Uh, but, but before before I go about and do this, let's just use this decorator. Uh, so uh, there are two particular um, particular ways we use the decorator. Uh, we can either require that a particular um, a particular route ha is uh, authenticated with OAuth, or we can say that we're aware whether or not it is. Okay. Um, so for this one, we're just going to require. Uh, we're just going to require that the main page handler actually is uh, decorated with OAuth, and hence uh, any requests that come through, if they if the user uh, is either a not signed in or b the signed in user d d has not actually uh, done the OAuth dance with the application, then f this will first happen before they can actually visit this page. Okay. So uh, now I've I've got this decorator, which we hope works. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Uh, and uh, we're requiring that in order for somebody to visit the main page of our application, um, they are signed in via OAuth. Okay. So now let's go back to this main page and reload. Ah, wonderful. Mm. So something went wrong. What went wrong? Uh, okay. My import was wrong. I know. Oh. I know what it was. So. I said it was in the API client package. It's not. It's in the discovery module mm -hmm. in the API client package. So that's easy to debug. Um, for those unclear on what I did so quickly, I went to my handy dandy Google App Engine launcher. Mm -hmm. I clicked logs, uh, and then I went to my logs to actually see what was going on. And it told me uh, import error, can't import name build, and and that jogged my memory. Uh, now, uh, when you're when you're doing this on your own. You won't be typing this from scratch. You'll be re referring to our documentation and things mm -hmm. like this. So hopefully these sorts of things don't happen. Ah, wonderful. Oh, yeah. Great. So 
Uh, what happened here? I refreshed the page. I'm now I'm no longer on localhost. I'm on accounts.google.com slash this giant long uh, URI containing all the information Google needs to actually perform OAuth specific to my application uh, and specific to actually the scope I needed. So uh, you see here uh, dummy app, dummy task app, the, the name we gave it in the APIs console, is requesting permission to manage your tasks. So manage, since we see manage your tasks, we know we didn't screw up the scope. We have the scope that we, we needed. Um, and it, in addition to this, it wants to perform these when I'm not using the application. So the, the default value uh, of on, offline is used for access, uh, which means that uh, you know if if some if it, the application is going to manage my task, maybe I can you know set an alarm, say like wake me up or something like this. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be uh, something worthwhile to do with the tasks API. Mm -hmm. I'm hinting at the future mm -hmm. of this of the rest of this talk. So, uh, oh, what went wrong? I know what went wrong, mm -hmm. but this is again part of the debugging process, right? So what happened is uh, we, we got localhost 8080 OAuth 2 callback. And now this, this is what Google knows to redirect for our application. Uh, and this is what we, in the API console, said we wanted to redirect to. So why doesn't this work? Well, if we look at our application code, mm -hmm. the only route we're serving is slash root, the root mm -hmm. of our application, right? So we actually need to, to, uh, to serve the route OAuth 2 callback. But have no fear. You don't have to figure out how you might do this because the decorator does all of it. Okay, so we'll add another handler. Uh, so the route that we're actually going to use is uh, uh, decorator .callback URL. Is this is this what it is? Now this one I want to double check. Oh, it's not. It's not on the thing that Takashi. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, let me quick pull up my uh, my reference. I'm cheating. Um, but that's okay. There we go. Callback path. The, 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 there are way too many characters in this for me to memorize. Sorry, folks. Uh, so let me explain what I've just done after I've got it formatted to my liking. Okay. So uh, the path is uh, decorator.callbackPath. Now, we don't actually have to specify callback path, but if we had wanted to, we could use uh, callback path equals some other string uh, when we actually construct the decorator. But the default value of callback path is the same default that uh, that the uh, the Google API console used mm -hmm. OAuth 2 callback. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then decorator callback handler actually gives us a handler to uh, to deal with this traffic. Okay. So now that we've updated to actually be able to handle that route, let's try this again. Debug. Ah, what went wrong? I know what went wrong. That's I didn't close mm. a bracket. My mm. bad. Mm. Bracket closed. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so we're back to where we were before. The same accounts.google.com auth page. Again, uh, with the correct scope, the task scope. And we're going to allow access. Great. So nothing changed. I didn't actually change uh, the content of mm. this. But uh, but we are actually, uh, and I, I can show you guys real quick. Uh, I'll go to the admin console for this application. Um, that is too big. Uh, and if I click list entities, we'll see that I actually have uh, an entity that is a credentials model for my application. So so I've actually now got credentials stored, mm -hmm. uh, OAuth credentials stored for um, for the user that I'm signed in as. Okay, great. We've got credentials. Now we want to do something with them, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, instead of uh, being boring and saying hello GDL, I'm going to actually go get all the tasks uh, for the signed in user and display them to him. That's somewhat simple, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna do this. So uh, in order to do this. Uh, I'll go back and do the uh, the other thing that I started to do. I'm going to create a service object to actually uh, interact with Google APIs, and in particular, we want to act with interact with the Tasks API. So uh, this uh, method build, which uh, we imported incorrectly and now we're importing correctly, takes an API name and an API version and spits out an object that you can interact with that API with. Uh, mm -hmm. So the API name is Tasks, and the version is V1. So uh, in order to build that, 
we simply call service equals build tasks v1. Uh, I'm going to refresh this to make sure, OK, we're all good with that. Uh, OK, mm -hmm. great. Uh, and now, uh, using this service, um, the tasks API has a, uh, a resource called tasks. Uh, and within that resource, it has several methods. The one we want to use in particular mm -hmm. is the uh, list method, right? Uh, so let me get my handy dandy reference just for my sake. OK. It, it, there's, again, too much here for me to, to, to go from memory. Um, but uh, so what we do here, uh, we take our service object, mm -hmm. uh, service.tasks. Uh, if we call that with no arguments, it gives us the sub-resource of the API called tasks. And this is a way for users to actually interact with their tasks. And now within that resource, we have this list method, mm -hmm. which actually allows users to list the tasks they have. And so we want uh, a, uh, a list of our tasks from the default task list. So into the method list, we pass task list equals at default. And that gives us all the tasks that we would have in the list that we see uh, in Gmail, for example, when we look at the default task list in Gmail. Uh, and in order to execute this, we want to use the signed in user. And we know, since we've specified decorator.oauth required, mm -hmm. that there will be a signed in user if we get to actually run this method, right? So when we actually execute this method, uh, after, after passing in the argument task list equals uh, to, uh, to, to the list method, uh, we're actually going to execute this by calling dot execute and passing in uh, as our uh, HTTP object, our, our authenticated object for making this request, mm -hmm. uh, passing the token that we've just gotten, uh, we're going to just simply pass in decorator dot HTTP. Now, uh, decorator dot HTTP is, uh, it's, it's uh, decorator HTTP the method is just a method from the decorator object that we created in the global scope before we actually created any of our handlers. Uh, but when we actually call that method, it, it is able to imply uh, an authenticated HTTP instance from the current context. So this exact handler uh, could have decorator dot HTTP correspond to a different user depending on who, who makes there. But uh, excuse me, which, which user uh, is actually calling, uh, being, having their request served by main page dot get. But uh, so, so the point is that decorator to HTTP depends on the current context and will actually give you uh, an authenticated HTTP object for the current user. OK? So great. We're going to call this, and we'll get a list of tasks. Uh, I'm going to pop this to the next line so we don't go over 80 columns. Uh, now, this, uh, this list of tasks uh, will have a lot of things in it. Uh, rather than going through uh, and taking out the parts we want, I'm just going to show you the whole thing for now. Mm -hmm. So I've imported pretty print uh, or pprint in Python so we can print what we get back in a, a somewhat user-readable format. So instead of hello GDL, I'm going to uh, write pretty print.p format uh, of the response we got back. Sound good? Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. good. All right. So uh, we'll go back here. Hope we didn't make any mistakes. Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. But that's you know that's the great thing of a live demo. Loading, loading. Awesome. Oh. So this is what the response looks like. So we have uh, we have a tag. We have uh, we have uh, uh, items as a, another key, and then down here uh, we have a kind. But really, the only thing we want is items. So this list of items gives us a list of all our tasks. And then from there, we have some other keys, like when the task is due, uh, uh, the ID of the task, uh, the position of the task, and most importantly, the title of the task. So in reality, uh, instead of displaying everything, we would rather just go get the items. So items equals tasks. Mm -hmm. Task is a dictionary, so we can call task.get, give it our key, items, that we see here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if that fails, we'll just say get the empty list instead, right? Uh, and then uh, the actually the the response we would want to send back. Uh, and since we're since I didn't mention this, but uh, we're sending back text plain. So rather than actually trying to render HTML, 
it's just going to render plain text uh, in the browser. And so we can use new line characters without having to use the uh, HTML BR character, right? Uh, it's somewhat of a benefit. Uh, so uh, for each task uh, in, in tasks, there we go. Uh, Items? No. Sorry, you're, you're exactly right. Good call. My bad. Hmm. That was about to be another bug, but Takashi jumped right in front of <laughs> that and, and saved us that tiny bit of time for that bug. Uh, so for each task in items, we're actually just going to get the title and fall back to the empty string if there is no title. Um, and then uh, uh, we will join these by a new line character in Python. New line dot join this list of titles. Okay. So if I call this instead uh, using that, oh, I didn't yeah, actually change. Showing, uh, You're right. Peep, peep in. I never uh, change what gets written to the response. So uh, instead of in pprint that preprint of task, I actually need to change to response. Thank you, Takashi. Bug oh, number two that he found. So make the request again now. And there we see take a nap. Uh, oh. I've got two minutes. I kind of want to write a handler that will let me insert another task. And then we'll come back to this. Uh, though I think we should uh, open the floor to questions. Really, uh, what, what I wanted you guys to see was uh, using the OAuth2 decorator is as simple as uh, getting a client ID and a client secret and specifying your scope. Uh, and once you have that decorator, you can use it in cases like this, uh, decorator.oauth required. Um, and once you have uh, actually required that your users are signed in with OAuth, you can do things like we did here uh, with tasks equals service.task, et cetera. And you can execute these with authenticated HTTP objects that you don't have to worry about creating. You don't have to worry about persisting the credentials for your users. It's all done by the decorator for you, and it's super handy. Uh, I will make one other uh, quick note. This stuff is all documented. Um, if, you, if you just go ahead, to, if you go to developers.google.com, uh, if you go to developers.google.com and you search for OAuth2 Decorator, developers.google.com actually has really great search if people weren't aware. Mm -hmm. So if you go and you search for OAuth2 Decorator, the very first hit uh, using Google App Engine will give you all this that we just uh, gave you and more. Uh, and it will, uh, it will give you plenty of other situations. Uh, so uh, another situation other than OAuth required uh, is OAuth aware. So rather than actually requiring the user go through the flow, you find out uh, if the current user has gone through the mm -hmm. flow. And if they have, you do one thing. You know, you serve maybe their tasks. And if they haven't, you say, hey, you haven't uh, gone through the flow yet. Do you want to? Do you just want to look around? Do you want to read some more, et cetera? Uh, and it's really up to you. So I encourage you to go to the documentation. If people want us to see another, uh, see us do another live demo doing similar things, uh, we'd be happy to. because. We, we acknowledge that uh, the OAuth dance is, is not the easiest thing, and we want to help, help, help make it easier for you guys. Um, so it's already 9.30. OK. Uh, but so. let's try to answer a few questions, one or two questions from moderator, yeah? Uh-huh. Do you have any particular preferences on what you'd like to do, Takashi? Sure. Um, yeah, here's a question. Uh, which is let me read it. You can answer yeah. it. This guy. Yeah, this guy probably. Yeah. Uh, so I, it says I know this session is focused on consuming Google APIs, but I was wondering if these concepts apply to third-party APIs also supporting OAuth two, or if a different tool set is needed. Many thanks from uh, Zoo Galdia in Washington D.C. Sorry if I butchered that name. So, do you want me to answer this, or did you want to answer this, or I'd be happy to. OK. So uh, these are specific to Google APIs, uh, but they're not actually explicitly specific to Google APIs. So the Google API Python client library can be used with any discovery-based API. And so what's happening when we call build tasks v1, it actually goes and retrieves uh, a discovery document. And from there, it can actually uh, it can create all the, all the necessary things uh, like service.tasks.list that we saw, right? Uh, but if, if any other discovery-based API that isn't from Google, uh, if you wish to use that, 
in, or, in addition to tasks v1, you would specify a specific URI template uh, that those can be inserted into, which would let you retrieve uh, a discovery document. And th that would still work. Uh, and then when you would uh, create your decorator, in addition to a client ID and secret um, and a scope, you would, you would also specify a, uh, a token URI uh, and uh, an auth URI. And both of these are par official parts of the OAuth2 spec, which has nothing to do with Google. It's just a, a general auth spec on the web. Uh, but this, this library is specific for discovery APIs, but not to uh, Google APIs. Mm. I Thanks. see a cloud endpoints question. Can I take yeah. that? I've been working yeah, a lot sure. on cloud endpoints. Do you guys plan on ex extending App Engine I both see. Okay. service to OAuth 2.0? I know it's already supported in cloud endpoints, so my best guess would be yes, but thought I'd, uh, uh, I'd ask anyway. And now I understand why Takashi had scrolled down. We, we don't generally give uh, estimates or comments on new features. <laughs> so sorry, can't answer that one. But we are serious about OAuth 2. So do we want to wrap up, or do we want to do one more? Yeah. Um, so I go one, one more. OK. I'll read one. it, and you'll answer it. Yeah. yeah. What is the best practice pattern for decorating a post handler? Uh, for example, after the OAuth dance, the original post is gone, so it's redirecting to, redirecting to get Handler the right things to do. Does the decorator help with this at all? So uh, tell me if you disagree with this. Uh, redirecting from a post handler is not good. Mm. Don't do this. Uh, that's, that's not the point of post. And if you're using post within your application for persisting data, uh, creating new things uh, in your data store, you don't want to redirect after this, right? The point of, you can still use the decorator, and I, it, given more time, I was going to show you guys this, but you can still use the decorator on a post handler uh, in the exact same fashion. And you can still call decorator.http and make these requests. But from a post handler, you'd be doing something more like inserting an object rather than uh, listing uh, you know, some, some titles or, or some tasks, as we saw here, right? So. Uh, after you complete the insertion, you would give some response back to whatever the caller was. So your post request maybe would be called asynchronously from your UI, right? Um, and so, so you, the best practice is you can use the decorator in exactly the same fashion, but doing a redirect is not something you uh, you want to do. I I, I guess uh, using the OAuth aware handler is probably better, uh, and it and if you're using OAuth aware, you won't get redirected. And maybe that's really what the heart of the question was, is will that redirect happen if I use OAuth required? So if you use OAuth aware on your post handler, then you can check uh, if decorator.has credentials. And if it has credentials, you can do what you would have done in the required case. And if it doesn't have credentials, you can serve a simple response like a 400 uh, and maybe give uh, you know a JSON error message that smart clients like your UI could consume and actually uh, do something with. Sound good? Yeah, I think so. Do you have any, any other clarifications or uh, contradictions to what I said? Takashi knows yeah. way more than I do about this stuff. No, uh, but the, he's as, what he's asking is, is the pay, where the payload is still there or not on the post hunter? What, how do you mean? Yeah. So when the redirect happens on the post handler, after coming back to their, so their callback URL, the payload I, will Yeah, yeah. I see lost, what you're saying. Right? I, I believe it will be lost. But mm -hmm. um, you don't want to actually redirect a post handler, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you want to make it so that uh, when the post request comes in, the cookies set in that post request from your user's session will be able to be used. Uh, and if there are no cookies with that post request, then you just give an error message. Uh, so so like I sort of stumbled through at the beginning of my answer, uh, you, don't, you, don't actually want, uh, you don't actually want to be doing a redirect from a post for the exact reason that Takashi said. Uh, the payload won't make it through a redirect to a third party and then back to you. Uh, so you want to be able to use this payload and if, if uh, via decorator.oauthaware, and if you can't, uh, then you just serve an error. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. No problem.
Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Have a great new year. This will be our last GDL of 2012. Uh, and uh, we hope to do many more in 2013. Okay.